Hello everybody, Tegan here with High Point. Thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's episode of What is in the Night Sky this month. Tonight, I'm gonna to be taking you through a beautiful tour of the night sky in the month of November. So we're gonna be traveling throughout our solar system. We're gonna see what the moon and the planets are up to this month. And then we're gonna travel out past our solar system. And we're gonna check out several deep sky objects that are present in the night sky in November. So as always, let's buckle in and see what's really up there. So the first stop on our tour tonight is not within our solar system. It's not even within our own galaxy. Messier 31, the Andromeda Galaxy, is one of the most prominent galaxies in the night sky. If you live under dark skies, you should be able to see the Andromeda Galaxy with the naked eye. Otherwise, binoculars will pick it up and even small telescopes will show the dark dust band that cuts across it. Be on the lookout for Messier 32 and Messier 110. It's two satellite galaxies. While under dark skies, this is a fantastic target for binoculars and wide field telescopes. It is a favorite among astrophotographers. Some like to use short focal length refractors to encompass the entire galaxy and take a nice wide field shots. Others like to use Newtonians or SCTs and get up close and personal on the core of this galaxy. So the next stop on our tour is within our own galaxy this time, and it is a beautiful, beautiful star cluster also known as the Double Cluster. NGC 884 and 869, the Double Cluster, is visible just like M31 to the naked eye under dark skies, but the best views are through binoculars or a telescope with a wide angle, low magnification eyepiece. Of the pair, NGC 884 has two bright stars near the center and is more compact and densely populated than its neighbor, NGC 869. Of all the deep sky objects that I have personally viewed through a telescope, the double cluster is definitely the top three coolest to see. Its dense smattering of stars against a very dark background is a incredible sight. From the double cluster, we're going to travel to a multiple star system, Mesarthem. Gamma Ariatus, or Mesarthem, is a gem of a multiple star for any telescope. A magnification of around 50 times will easily split Mesarthem into two brilliant white stars of equal brightness. If you are new to looking through a telescope or visual observation, double stars are a great place to start. This one is no joke. It is beautiful through an eyepiece. The next deep sky object and the last deep sky object on our list lies within our own galaxy yet again, and it is called the Little Dumbbell Nebula also known as Messier 76. Messier 76, one of the more challenging Messier objects. It can be found three degrees from the magnitude 3.6 star Epsilon Persei. Small scopes can detect it, but larger scopes of 10 inches or greater of aperture are needed to better show the two lobes. Unlike Messier 27, the Dumbbell Nebula, which is very easy to spot in binoculars, small and large telescopes under dark skies, the little dumbbell Messier 76 is a bit more challenging, but if you have a large Dobsonian or reflector telescope, it is a treat under dark skies. Now let's bring it closer to our Earth and see what the moon and the planets are up to this month. Mercury can be seen low over the southwestern horizon 15 minutes after sunset throughout November. A thin crescent moon appears 8 degrees to its left on the 3rd, with the planet at greatest elongation from the sun on the 16th. Similarly, Venus is an easy target, reasonably high over the southwest in the evening twilight, with the moon appearing below it on the 4th. Saturn reaches opposition in September, but remains well-placed for observation throughout the evening in Aquarius. Look for a beautiful gibbous moon very close by on the 10th. Neptune is also visible throughout the evening in neighboring Pisces. November, however, belongs to Uranus, which reaches opposition this month in Taurus, with Jupiter rising mid-evening towards the east. You'll find the waning gibbous moon nearby on the 16th and 17th. That leaves Mars. Mars is alone among the stars of Cancer in the pre-dawn hours. You'll find Castor and Pollux and Gemini pointing towards the planet at the start of the month with a waning gibbous moon to its east on the morning of the 21st. The moon itself is new on the 1st, the full beaver moon occurring 
on the 15th. Now, before we leave, we're gonna talk a little bit more about Uranus as it is in opposition this month. Uranus, the seventh planet from the sun, reaches opposition this month on the 16th. While it's not a bright planet, it lies at the very edge of naked eye visibility. It's currently moving among the stars of Taurus and therefore appears high in the sky for northern hemisphere observers. As an added bonus, the planet is within the same binocular field of view of the Pleiades star cluster for the first half of the month, a once in a lifetime opportunity to see these two together. The planet stands out from the background stars by shining with a steady aquamarine light while a telescope at low power will show a tiny disk. If you have a scope of eight inches of aperture, you may also be able to spot Titania and Oberon, the planet's two largest moons. All right, so that is our tour of the night sky in the month of November. If you have any questions, please let us know and we will be more than happy to assist. My name is Tegan. Thank you so much again and clear skies.